So today I am happy to present the Tentec Eagle HF Amateur Radio Transceiver. Now normally my, my hobby, my interest is in using old gear, so whether it be tube type or solid state, I love repairing and restoring old radios for broadcast or for amateur radio use. But I decided to go out and buy a brand new 10 Tech Eagle HF and 6 meter transceiver. Why? Well, I wanted a nice fancy new HF radio. Uh, normally I, I'm a VHF operator, but I do occasionally make some HF contacts and I love shortwave listening. I also like 10 Tech because they are an American company and they make their products right here in the United States. Um, as a matter of fact, 10 Tech was just bought out by RF Concepts, which is another good American company, so uh, no worries. It's still a well-made American radio. So I'm really excited to actually have a brand new piece of gear here in the lab. I'm excited that it's American made and I've had it for uh, about three months now. I've been using it a bit and I'm pretty happy with it. So what do you get when you buy a brand new 10 Tech Eagle? Well, you get, first of all, it comes in a generic plain cardboard box, but no worries, no problems there. You get the Eagle HF transceiver, a basic hand microphone, a very nice, well laid out instruction manual. I don't have it here with me, but it's a, it's a well laid out, easy to read instruction manual. You also get a pamphlet on how to become a 10 Tech Ambassador, which you can read. A really neat quick start guide. This shows you the basic display and the basic control functions that the Eagle offers. So I won't go into great detail on the display functions or the controls of the Eagle because you can take a look at the quick start guide and take a look at the manual. The radio also comes with some accessories. This has a standard Anderson power pole power connector, which I'm really excited about. I, I really like the Anderson power pole connectors because they're, they're simple. You can buy them off the shelf and install them on cables yourself. They're modular, they're standard, they are genderless, and they're being, they're being adopted by um, a lot of public service organizations as well as is, uh, being standard throughout the ham shack. So with a lot of radios and accessories having power poles, I'm really excited to see that this uses a power pole connector, which is right here. And it includes a short length of power cable with the power connector already installed. So if you, if you don't have a, a power pole system already, you can just use this just as, as a standard power cable. So you can, you can strip this wire and uh, put terminals on it and hook it right up to a battery or a power supply if you wish. Also in the accessory pack, are some connectors. This has a multi-pin DIN accessory connector on the back, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And they include a, a, a regular DIN of male connector that mates with the, with the accessory connector. So you can solder that up for your own custom accessory cables. There's also a three and a half millimeter audio cable, a couple of uh, spade terminal power connectors, and a spare 25 amp automotive style blade fuse and a couple of tie wraps. So that's all in the accessories that come with the radio. The Tentec is a uh, HF and 6 meter transceiver. It covers all of the HF bands 160 meter through 10 meter plus 6 meter. It does include the WARC bands. It does include six meter, or, uh, 60 meters and it has extended receive coverage. So it has full receive from um, roughly 500 kilohertz up through uh, 30 megahertz plus six meter. So I'm really excited about that because one of the main things that I want to use this radio for is for shortwave listening, not just for ham radio use. I ordered this radio with a few accessories. First, I ordered this with the built-in antenna tuner. It's an automatic antenna tuner that works, works on all HF bands. It does not work on 6 meter, but it does function 160 through 10 meters. I also ordered it with a noise blanker. Um, traditionally, noise blankers are used to filter out impulse noise. That's the, the, the uh, rapid clicks and pops and low frequency buzzes that you'll get sometimes with other electrical equipment 
like if you have um, a space heater or even a, a range. If you turn, turn a burner on an electric range, it'll click on and click off uh, every, every few minutes. And that creates a, just a, a, a quick pop in the, in the receive audio. So the noise blanker is good for reducing that noise. At least traditionally it is. Um, my personal experience hasn't been the greatest with the particular noise blanker in this radio. It doesn't work as well as some that I've seen, but still it's a nice option to have. This also, this paper comes with the radio too when you receive it and it shows what options you've purchased. Um, this has, this radio comes standard with a 2.4 kilohertz crystal. I've also ordered an additional 15 kilohertz crystal and a 600 hertz crystal filter. So this has a spot for three filters. Uh, 2.4 kilohertz is standard and then I have a 15 kilohertz and 600 hertz. The 2.4 kilohertz filter is standard for single sideband transmission and reception. The 15 kilohertz is used for FM reception and transmission. And in fact, if you want to run FM, you have to have the 15 kilohertz crystal filter installed. Uh, FM is used, this will send and receive FM on uh, 10 meter and 6 meter. And lastly, the 600 hertz filter for CW. There is one other filter you might be interested in if you want to transmit AM. I think it's about a 10 or a 12 kilohertz filter. Um, this will receive AM with, with the filters that I've purchased, but it actually will not transmit a double sideband AM without that special AM filter. So that's the basics of the 10 Tech Eagle HF transceiver. Uh, I will tear it apart. We will take a look inside. I'm not going to go through, I'm um, not going to do a real detailed analysis on circuit design or component selection, but I will at least show you the basics of uh, how it's laid out inside. And then we'll actually hook this thing up and go over some of the basic functions because this blog is about electronics applications. So we'll like to look at the practical applications and uses of electronics and electronic equipment. So we won't go into great detail about circuit design, but we'll take a look at what's inside and then we'll uh, fire this up and see how it sounds and talk a little bit about its performance. So first let's take a look at what's on the back panel. There's a regular uh, ground connection. It's got a wing nut so you can hook that up to your station ground. A single antenna connector. It, this, has, this also has a built-in keyer so you can hook a uh, keyer up there. USB for firmware updates. And read control I believe but I have not played with any of the uh, computer functions. DC output jacks for accessories. This is the main accessory connector I was talking about. This has audio in, audio out, um, amplifier keying. You can take a look at the manual for all of the, all of the uh, accessory connector functions. And it has two auxiliary outputs which also are described in the manual. Aux 2 isn't connected by default but you do have all the parts in the accessory package to wire up Aux 2 which again described in the manual. External speaker connector, 25 amp blade fuse, and my favorite, the Anderson power pole connector. Now this is wired in the standard um, amateur radio emergency service configuration um, in relation to, to where the red and black are located. On the top is the built-in speaker. I'm not happy with the built-in speaker. Sound quality is pretty poor, frequency response is somewhat limited, and it's pretty distorted. It does say in the Tentec literature though that they recommend using an external speaker and I'll agree with that. It's okay, but it's not great. Anyone who has used a lot of old equipment though, uh, you're probably used to using an external speaker anyways. A lot, of, a lot of boat anchor radios don't even have a built-in speaker, so you always use an external. And I'm fine with that. So there is an external speaker connector right there, which I recommend using. So let's take a look inside. There's four screws on the side which I removed and the top cover lifts off. It's a little limited by a very short speaker cord but we can unplug that. So let's take a look inside. The F1, F2, and F3 is uh, the location of the filters. We can take that cover off and let's take a look at the filters. These can be moved around. They're just uh, plug-in filters underneath this cover. So if you choose that you want uh, filters with different bandwidths, it's no problem just to pull this cover off and uh, install the filters that you want. So there's the 600 hertz filter, 15 kilohertz filter, and the 2.4 kilohertz filter. 
nice little modules that just plug in just like that. And it even says on the board, I realize it's upside down on the camera, but it says F3, this is F2, and this is F1. You have to note which location you've installed which filters because uh, once you turn the radio on for the first time, you have to actually set those up in the manual or in the um, menu on the radio. So you have to tell the radio which filter is installed in which slot. These filters were factory installed, and the factory has gone ahead and set those up for me, so we don't have to do it here. But if you install your own filters, you do have to set those up. Up here in the front, um, almost looks like like uh, old computer memory modules, but those are not memory modules. Those are just uh, daughter boards that are on the main board. This looks like mostly surface mount construction, especially by these filters. Um, mostly surface mount construction. There's some through hole. Uh, down here on the, on the bottom right, back by the power connector, this looks like the automatic antenna tuner. So you can see all the uh, toroids, the capacitors, all these, these are little relays, these uh, white boxes. So this is the automatic antenna tuner. And when it's operating, you can actually hear these relays clicking in and out rapidly as this is trying to find the best combination of inductance and capacitance to get a good match with your antenna. So that's the basics of the inside. Like I said, I won't go through um, you know, component by component, but you can at least take a look at the very nice construction, good solid shielding between different components, uh, at least right here. There is a couple of small fans inside here, so I assume the power amp module is, uh, is right here. Oh yeah, those are the PA transistors right there. A couple fans down inside. Uh, they are on a thermostat, so those fans only come on if you've been transmitting for a while. And they're not very loud, so they are uh, easily tolerable in even a quiet ham shack like mine. So no problems at all with those fans, and it's nice that they're on a thermostat. Okay, we've talked about the 10 Tech Eagle's capabilities. We've taken it apart and had a peek inside. Now let's uh, turn it on and see how it works. It's connected to a standard linear 12 volt power supply and a 20 meter dipole antenna that's in my attic. So let's turn it on and see what happens. First, we'll see on the display the 2.001. That's the firmware revision of this radio's software. So on the left is the uh, audio, the volume control, or uh, AF uh, gain if you want to call it that, in the middle. And the outside ring is the RF gain. So you can turn that down, turn that up. Audio, RF, your main tuning dial is right here. This multi-controller is used for uh, menu functions. It's got a small menu, and also for some of the other uh, capabilities that are available on the keys here. On the right is um, the outside ring is passband tuning, or IF shift, as you may, uh, may call it on other radios. And the inside knob, this is really neat. This is a, a really interesting function of the Tentec Eagle. It has variable bandwidth. This radio internally, it actually has a digital signal processor, and it uses DSP for the audio path, both for transmit and for receive. So if I turn the volume up here, you'll see how I can vary the bandwidth of the signal with this knob anywhere from a minimum of, of 100 hertz all the way up to 15 kilohertz. So right now I'm on about, uh, we'll start about 3,000 kilohertz, or th 3,000 hertz, 3 kilohertz. And we'll adjust this down. So you might turn that way down if you're trying to discriminate against uh, uh, CW signals that are real close together. Or you can turn it up for a typical single sideband use. Or if you're going to listen to double sideband AM, you can turn it up even further. Even though you only have three filters in this radio, this will digitally uh, work between those three filters. So if you go down to, to 2400 hertz, it'll automatically choose the 2.4 kilohertz filter. Or if you go up to 15, it'll choose the 15 or you can go anywhere in between. So let's choose a different mode. This is your main operating mode. So right now we're in lower sideband. Let's go to AM and let's see if we can tune in a uh, shortwave station. We'll turn the bandwidth up. It's 
So there's a 7490 kilohertz WBCQ just outside of the hand bands there. So that's demonstrating the uh, extended receive capabilities. Over here you have an attenuator you can turn on. This fast button adjusts the automatic gain controls response speed. And this is, uh, you can jump between hand bands quickly with the band button. Each button does double duty and you can choose the shift function by pressing the function button. And then you can choose the other function of each button. One button that I don't like having a dual capabilities is the tune button. This operates the automatic antenna tuner. So if I press that button right now, it'll try to tune up the radio on this band. But if I want to change the output power, it's on the same button. You have to press the shift key. Then you can press power and you can use the multi button to change the output power right there. This is a 100 watt radio. We can turn it down to zero for code practice. Or, any, or up to 100, or anything in between. The problem with that is sometimes I'll accidentally tune up on somebody's transmission when I'm just trying to change the power. So if I forget to hit the function button first before I hit power, I'll end up tuning up on their signal. So I mentioned this has extended receive capabilities, and it seems to work pretty well in and around the ham bands. The only area where it, where it truly falls off is in the, is in the low frequencies if you want to go, let's just try to tune in an AM broadcast station. If I want to go to like 580, there's a very strong nearby 50,000 watt AM broadcast transmitter on 580. I, and I should be able to get that rock solid. On any other radio with even the, the most minimal antenna, I can get 580 perfectly. But here, gain control is up all the way, no luck. This does have a preamplifier, so we can hit the function button and then turn on the preamp. And I can just barely hear a voice, but it's a long ways from being a good quality receive. So the receive performance falls off drastically below the 160 meter band. But from 160 meters all the way up through 10 meter, the extended receive capability is very good. Lastly, the buttons and the display are backlit, and in the menu you can change the backlight intensity and the backlight color. It has RGB LEDs for the backlight, so it's a, kind of a gimmick factor, but you, you can choose just about whatever color you'd like for the backlight. I have it turned down quite low right now, but uh, if I turn the lights off, you can see that the backlight is, is, is very good. You can turn it up nice and bright. Or you can turn it down if you want to operate the radio in the dark and you don't want a big glaring display in your face. So there are some neat little features like that that the Tentec Eagle offers that I think are pretty neat. So overall, I'm very happy with the, with the Tentec Eagle. Transmit and receive performance is very good. Out of band performance is good except on the lowest frequencies. It's, uh, has a, it's a mid-range radio, has a basic set of features, and for my operating style, I think it's perfect. So I'm overall very happy with the 10 Tech Eagle HF transceiver.